This, 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 this is After Opie and Anthony Live. Here's your host, Sam Roberts. Jim Norton has left the building. I repeat, Jim Norton has left the building. This is After Opie and Anthony Live with your official wrap-up. On Metalligate 2013. E-Rock, you were in this studio. You didn't even see what was going down. No, they didn't. They refused to end the show until they found out what was going on with Jim. They did they find out the ending? Well, you came in right after, uh, right before I did, um, with an update, and then I went down again. I said, "There's just too many people in the lobby. I don't think this is going to happen." But they didn't get an ending. Uh, they they just no, not where Jim came in after the break, but they just concluded that this was not going to happen. But we don't know for sure. All I said was Jim Norton has left the building. He's not here anymore. 866-WOW-1-WOW is the phone number to call this show. Of course, we're all talking about Metallica. And that concert that Sirius XM put on on Saturday night, I've been to a, a, a good amount of shows. Not that many metal shows, but just shows in general. I've seen a lot of very good live acts. And Metallica at the Apollo was among the best concerts I've ever been to. That's why I refused to leave early. I don't know if you heard the first hour of the show, but Opie was complaining that I wouldn't let him leave until both encores were done, until the band had exited the stage, until the house lights were up. I was Opie's date to the Metallica concert. Uh, Daniel, you're on after Opie and Anthony Live. Hey, Sammy, professional broadcaster, you rule. Thanks, buddy. Hey, I noticed something in the first hour of today's show. Yeah. Each day, Opie goes on about what he ate the night before, if he ate the Lucky Charm. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a hot topic these days. All the listeners want to know, was Opie able to go to bed without his bowl of Lucky Charms? He's trying to get in shape, you know? Oh, oh I agree, but it's kind of a callback to last week's episode of the Sam Roberts Show online podcast, where you were talking with Rosenberg about uh, the old bit of where they checked in and what you ate every night. I'm just wondering if it's possible that Opie is a secret member of the Sam Roberts Show online listening audience. I think I'll hang up and listen. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. You're a professional caller. Uh, I think that's an excellent theory. Iraq, do you think that there could be any... Opie explaining to us every day what did he have for his late night snack. Is that a callback to what did Sam have for dinner six years ago or Actually, seven years it ago? It could be possible, but then again, I only figured out that the L.A. on the on your uh, your podcast title there, uh -huh. meant listening audience. I thought it was, you put that on since you did wrestling interviews in L.A. No, no, I call I call the audience, I think everybody needs, like, you know, the Pests, the Bubba Army, I don't know if Stern has a name, but I feel like SRSO L.A. is just something that's well, so catchy. I'm a catchy. few weeks behind, so I'm catching up. All right. Uh, Quinn in California. Sam, hey, how's it going? Good. I was just laughing my ass off at the 15-minute delay, but... Oh, my God, they were talking about Jimmy like he was a special needs child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, like, when Jim gets into I need this mode, especially when it comes to a celebrity photo, there is no reasoning with him. We all know that we had to get down, like, going into the show today, after what happened, because what happened at the concert was Sirius XM, they put together this amazing show. Like, when Sirius XM throws a party, we say what we'll say about them on a day-to-day -day basis, but they know how to throw a party, okay? And they set up this thing where since I went with Opie, Opie had these nice tickets where there was a meet and greet set up. And Opie, Anthony, and Jim were invited to go to this meet and greet before the Metallica show. So we get up there, and Jim is already there. He was there early. And he's saying, you know, what if, what, what if one of the members doesn't show up? What? And, he, and he knew that somebody wasn't going to be there. And, he, and I was just sitting there going... I don't know. I didn't know this was going to happen to me yesterday, so I was just psyched that anybody from Metallica was coming up to take a photograph with me. But, as it turns out, at the meet and greet, James Hetfield doesn't show up. So the Metallica meet and greet was with uh, uh, Lars and Kirk and them. No James. Just the other three guys. Uh, so, whatever. We all took our photos. Jim was obviously disappointed that this didn't happen. And so we go down to the concert which happens right after that, and it was the most unbelievable thing you've ever heard. I mean, they started out with a hit the lights, master of puppets, ride the lightning, like medley, and they did everything. They did Sad But True and Sanitarium, and we listened earlier on the show today. We played, uh, what, For Whom the Bell Tolls and Seek and Destroy. Those are the ones we listened to, right? Yes. Uh, let's listen. Let's, let's close today 
with another song from uh, Metallica. Right. Uh, do we have? Uh, do we play "Memory Remains"? No, I don't know if that one was cut. I'll tell you which ones we had cut still. Yeah, please do. Give me one second. Here. Okay, so we all watch. We all watch this concert. We're in the sixth row. Okay, Sirius XM really hooked it up, and they did. They gave us laminates, and they gave us free T-shirts, and the bar was free, and there were hors d'oeuvres being passed around. Everything was free. It was amazing. It was a celebration of life. And so after we see, and the, the Apollo Theater is in the middle of Harlem, and it's this theater that, if you don't know, it's mainly for black acts and low level. It only seats like thirteen hundred people. So the fact that Metallica is playing at this venue is like a once in a lifetime scenario. What's the other songs, Iraq? Uh, the other songs that we have cut that but we haven't played are "Sad but True" and "Master of Puppets." We'll do Master of Puppets. That was really good. All right, that's eight minutes long. What was sad? How long is sad but true? Uh, five. We're gonna ten. go sad but true. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go sad but true at the end of the show. There you go. Uh, but like for me, I know I always on the show, I mainly advocate for pop music, and that's one because I definitely listen to pop music, and two, well, two to be a contrarian because I like to argue, and three because there's nobody doing that. Because there isn't anybody saying, well, actually, this is good, or I actually enjoy this. Y you know, as far as the voice of metal or rock, there's three voices in here that firmly support metal. So I don't feel the need to do it every day. So a lot of people were surprised that I was even excited about this show. But when I was in, like, 6th, 7th, 8th grade, I was just a little poser metalhead. You know, like, I was just this little nerd with a denim jacket with heavy metal patches all over it. That's when I got into White Zombie. And Rob Zombie, I ended up getting the logo and autograph tattooed on my arm. But being at that show just brought me all the way back to being a little kid, being a seventh grader, and just remembering how badass it was to just be a little metalhead. It was headbanging my afroed head off my neck at that show. It was amazing. So we leave the show, and I'm sitting there like, it's one of those experiences where you're just on cloud nine. You're like, I can't believe... I got to see this amazing show and you're looking around at everybody around you like, you know, we're all we're all family here because we all got to experience this awesome thing. I was happy. I just wanted to hug people. Eric, you went to the, see the show. Unfortunately, people were asking me on Twitter. I ended up being Opie's date. I don't know how, but you already had tickets through your wife, correct? Yeah, I got my own ticket. So you were up in the balcony. That's why we were in different spots. Not like the upper, upper top. I was just above where you guys were. <laughs> but like I said, the Apollo seat's like 1,300. Yeah. So there is no bad seat. No, I had, there was nothing obstructing the view. Yeah. You could see everything on the stage. Even with you guys on the floor, as close as you were, yeah. if everyone stood up, you still had to stand up and kind of weave through people just to see everything on the stage. I got Here's to, looking down, you saw everything. I felt bad because I was sitting in front of Patrick Wilson from uh, Insidious, and Insidious 2 and The Conjuring, and he had brought his son, who was like eight or something, and his son had these giant like headphone ear oh, protector I things on. Them, yeah. But I was sitting in front of his son, and... You know, Patrick Wilson did the Sam Roberts show last week here on this channel on Sunday. Did he remember you? Yeah, we were talking for a little while before the show. And I felt bad because I was like, I, do you want me to duck down or something? He was like, no, we're all going to be standing anyway. I was like, okay. But I felt like I was blocking this little eight-year-old's view. Little mini Patrick Wilson all night. He was also in hard candy, Patrick Wilson. Um, but yeah, like I said, was it the loudest show you've ever been to? Yeah. Uh, before that, we I saw Soundgarden at... Uh um, the Rock in, in, in Newark. And I don't know if the sound was just bad, but it was so loud, it was deafening. Were you up close? Uh, no. Soundgarden? We were, we were um, in one of those, uh, you know, like the, the hockey suites. And it was that loud in and a hockey? Because that's like a 15,000-seat arena. I honestly don't think that the sound guy calibrated right <laughs> for that size arena because it was just bouncing all over the place. But until then, um, Metallica was... It was hurting my head. After the third song, I had to get earplugs. Dude, I didn't get earplugs because I wanted to be like, no pussy shit for me. I am going to experience this. It's the same reason I didn't want to leave early. It's the same reason I got there early. I wanted to experience everything humanly possible. And I woke up on Sunday morning uh, with a headache. My neck is still sore. Yep. My hearing is not all the way back, but it was only 50% when I woke up yesterday. I, I got most of my hearing back last night. Like, I woke up hungover. And I don't drink. Yeah, you had a bad headache. But it was worth it. Yeah. I went to get some Chipotle and Mr. Pibb, and everything was fine after that. After the uh, the show, we got 
a late dinner and brought it home mm -hmm. and we're watching Big Lebowski <laughs> and I'm sitting there looking at, I can't understand any of the conversation going on in the movie. It's just <laughs> mumbling. And had I not seen that movie so many times, I'd have no idea what was going on. Yeah. And you just, rah, 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 rah. And the you only thing I heard was, was uh, John Goodman yelling, uh, shut the fuck up, Donnie. You, okay, well, because that's your favorite line. Well, that, because he yells that. Everything right. else you really couldn't hear. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, the hearing was shot, but it was amazing. Was it the best show you've ever been to? Yeah, it has to be. So you know what I'm talking about then, when like you experience something like that that is so amazing that you just want to be like, look at what we did together, everybody. Yeah. So I'm leaving with that kind of attitude, and Jim was right down there with us, and he was like, what an amazing show, huh? And I was like, yeah, that was incredible. And he was like, yeah, I just wish James had been there for the, uh, for the meet and greet. He couldn't was, enjoy the moment. I was like, we're not even out of the Apollo yet. This show was so loud, I'm sure that outside the Apollo on the streets of Harlem, there was music playing that has never been played there before. If well, When people started taking photos when Metallica uh, first got on stage, mm -hmm. I did a reverse search on Twitter like for Metallica, Apollo, mm -hmm. to see some of the photos that people were putting up. Mm -hmm. There were just tons of black guys taking photos <laughs> from the street of the marquee, yeah. just saying, like, I don't believe this shit, Metallica's mm -hmm. at the Apollo. Yeah, and just sounds. Like, what's that? What is it? Electric guitar? What is that? Enter Sandman riffs start playing and they've never heard the song before. That like was this? probably the safest Harlem has been in a long time. I don't know. I don't know. Those white metal fans started getting drunk towards the end of the show. Well, like I like I said, when they were on those buses that the company was providing, yeah. as we were leaving, one of them was uh, pulling into the intersection and two guys were on the top part of the bus towards the back, yeah. jumping and trying to touch the traffic light as it was going through the intersection. Right. So, I mean, I don't know how safe it was. It was safe, it was safe in the sense that there wasn't any black-on-white crime, but white-on-white -white crime was probably at an all-time high in Harlem. Uh, but Imagine yeah. cops getting that call and they're not believing it. Yeah, like, okay. That's not happening. Any, oh, Whatever. yeah. What was... Oh, Metallica. Good yeah, one, okay. Dispatch. Um, so, but Sirius XM was super prepared for everything. Like not they had only everything together. Like Erock said, not only did they have buses waiting for people outside the show, so it's like we can't. I guess I didn't even think of this, but uh, they're very smart and serious at Sirius XM. You know, we don't give them enough credit because somebody said we cannot invite fifteen hundred of our listeners to Harlem and then just tell them to find their own way home Saturday at eleven o'clock at night, and that was and it's true. So they got buses. It was pouring rain. What happens? Nobody gets wet. Everybody gets Sirius XM ponchos. Yeah, I never would have thought of that. No, me neither, but I had, a, I had a leather jacket on. And I was sitting there going, oh, fuck. Because you can't wear leather in the rain. It gets ruined. But I got a poncho. I was like, this is incredible. You know, stupid me, they're handing them out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my wife takes one and, and I take one. And they're in these little white bags. And I looked at it quick. I thought they were just handing out, like, Sirius XM t-shirts. And I said, no thanks, and I threw it back in the box. <laughs> and as we're walking out, I'm like, oh, crap, it's raining. And I turn around, and she's got the blue poncho on. Yeah. Oh, she didn't get one like, for you, though? No, she just laughed. She's <laughs> okay. like, you threw it back. So I walked in the rain. It's all about tough love in the Nagel household. It's all about learning and lessons. I, we, as we were leaving, we saw Opie trying to part through the crowd to get out. Right. But you were nowhere in sight. No, Opie wanted to I don't, get out of that place. Hey, Opie would have left me. And by the way... That's the other thing. I don't know. Opie thought that I wasn't able to get home, or get back to his place from 125th Street. Like Anthony said, you just find a subway and you go. Florentine is coming back in here. I didn't. I was just said that Jim's left the building, and I was giving people the background of what happened. So after this show, Jim is obsessed with the photo. Like he's not as good as the show was, and as good a time as he had, and as much it was a big deal to him. He's obsessed about this photo. So they're in today to do Stern. And this is where we're at now. Jim went down there uh, during the last part of the show trying to get the photo. You sat with him. Is yeah. this What's the most intense you've seen him over a photo? Um, it, it wasn't this time. This time was pretty bad. I, I, I'm trying to remember. Probably like a Metallica, maybe a giant stadium that Opie was talking about earlier Okay, in the so show. the same. Because he's about... Because he's got pictures with every member of the band. Just he not just, together. He wants that group shot because he says it's tough to get. Um, so we're sitting down. And we're down there uh, at the lobby. We all waited in the lobby. I was just there to watch what happened because I wanted to see if he freaked out. I wanted to be there for it. You were there, what, to just to see it? Or were you going to try to jump in? No, well, I was going to try to 
hopefully see Lars or Kirk mm -hmm. and go, hey, Lars, hey, man, what's going on? Because they know right. me. And then go, you know, and James kind of does too, but just go, hey. And then all of a sudden, if they all came out together and go, hey, Lars, I got a friend here. Could you, we get a group picture real quick? Could you get the band right here? Right. Just for a second. So I was hoping to do that. That was my plan. And if you ask them, and it's a familiar face, and there's, you're saying for one shot with yep. my friend Jim. and The camera's probably, right here. He's right there. And you have to imagine at least one of them know Jim by face. Oh, yes. yeah, you're a comedian, right? Well, uh, we're all waiting there. Jim was getting, and he was, Opie used the word spiraling. He was spiraling down there. It was getting worse and worse as the minutes ticked on. Because he was going, people were coming up, and he was asking everybody he could, can you help me with this, can you help me with, and he's texting his management while he's in the lobby. Uh, and when I came into to O&A to give him the update, it was when uh, one of the guys had come back saying, look, I'm trying. I don't want to be a bad guy, but we're going to try. And I don't want to be a bad guy if it doesn't happen. And that's the moment where you're like, oh, no. Like, that's not a good thing to hear. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was very tense out there. <laughs> yeah. A lot of negativity before we well, knew the final conclusion. I, I did. I was, I was talking to him, and he goes, I go, what's your feeling on this? And he goes, I already know. I already know what's going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not happening. It's, I, I have to play it out. I have to play it out, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> I was trying to pump up. I'm like, I got a good feeling about this. Did you have a good feeling about I it? I did. I did. I, I thought they would all come out together for some reason. I thought that there would be... Well, it's close quarters. I thought there'd be one little quick photo op in front of that serious banner where some big executive goes, hey, can we get a quick picture of you guys in front of our banner? Even though they got it at the Harlem Theater last week and, but the or problem, Saturday. The problem started when we realized that all the band was in Howard's wing hanging out. Yeah. And there were man people in management here were going into his wing. Like they were going into Howard's area. And Jim saw that. Wow, what the fuck? What the fuck? Because then. Yeah. Because so then, then you like, don't have to wait for him out in the lobby. Exactly. Yeah. And Jim saw that. Wow, what the fuck? What the fuck? Because then. Yeah. Because so then, then you like, don't have to wait for him out in the lobby. Exactly. They're free to go once they hit the lobby. Now, the, I didn't notice, but the more people that were like lingering in the lobby, and they weren't even all there for Metallica. Like there was some rapper there for Shade 45. But as more people started lingering in the lobby, did that make Jim more uneasy? No, he didn't mention that. But I, I noticed it. I'm like, and now it's getting a little crowded in here. Right. Jim was just singularly focused. <laughs> it was funny because there was Metallica's like security. There was two guys by. By Howard's door, yeah. where Metallica was behind. And they were just looking at, they were the club soda Kenny's. Right. Cause Ken, and Kenny was with Jim. And I'm like, Kenny, you see those two guys over there? I go, they're looking at me and Jim like we could be a problem. Like you look at people when O and A are walking out, go, all right, those two creeps over there could be a problem. I, I need to watch their moves when right. the band comes out. Like I'm going to block them out. Yeah. And he's like, he goes, I know, I see him because they kept looking over. I go, right, let's just see what these guys are going to do. Do you think Kenny could do something like go up to those guys since they're of the same ilk and be like, hey, these are my guys. I know you're here with your guys. So it's, you know, Jim made that decision to don't go to the security and say, can we get a picture? Because they usually will say no. Right. You don't want to get cock blocked. You, you'd rather do it in the moment. Right. Don't give any advance notice. Well, I guess we'll get to the conclusion. Because all the audience knows so far is that Jim Norton is not in the building. Because what happened was, we were down in the lobby. You were ready. Kenny was ready. I was watching. I was just there to observe. And uh, we saw some commotion. And people started coming out of uh, Howard's wing. And there was Kirk. He came out first. And Kirk came out, and he turned the corner, and he walked into the elevator bank, and he went downstairs. Well, first and, he said hi to Annabella. Well, yeah, but but, yeah, but but he didn't say, but then it's over. It was, it, and that was it. Yeah, because I think Roland was saying, did you see, was Jim mad that he, Kirk said hello to Annabella? And I'm like, he didn't even notice that, because as soon as he saw Kirk come out himself, he knew it was over. He was right. deflated. It didn't right. matter. It didn't matter if he talked to some homeless guy for five minutes. He knew it was over. And just like that, and the real problem for Jim, too, is that he's, like, there's nobody, well, I guess he could blame people for not helping him earlier, like his management or whatever, but it's easier. I, I would think it'd be easier for him when there's somebody he can be mad at who said no to him, but the fact is that Kirk just walked out and went downstairs because he was like, I'm done here. Just the cars you dealt. You never knew. Right. Yeah, nobody nobody blew him off from the no. band. But Jim's not looking to meet 
them individually. I know. He needs know. them all got, together. Yeah, he's got, I got the whole band in separate pictures. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because uh, you, you could know. put them in like a picture frame with like the four photos in one frame yeah, or something. Or just like separate. I don't put them separate next to each other, like all yeah. across. You know, I got all the Sabbath separate too. I know Jim's got the original Sabbath together. He's like got I, that picture. But you know what? It's not. I don't know. You know, that's when you're getting, you're at another level. We're like, well, now I need the whole band together. Right. It's like, it's very rare. That's going to happen. One time on our show, that metal show, um, Rob Halford was taping the early show. And then there's another show we tape right after we do two in one day. And yeah. Lemmy was doing the next show uh -huh. and Lemmy and Halford were talking together. I'm like, that'd be a fucking amazing picture. Yeah. And I wound up getting it. I got, I go, okay, hurry up. And I, I said, can I get up? So that's a cool picture. Like, you know, Lemmy from Motorhead and Rob Halford from Juice amazing. together. And I also got Sammy Hagar with Lars. Because oh. Lars did our show one time, and then Sammy was on the early show, and they were talking. I jumped in that one, too. And those are those things you're never going to get. You're never going to get Those guys are never together. No. And so. even, and, and it has to be like a press scenario like this. Like, they're here to do a radio show or a TV show. Because even if you get backstage, like, they're all in different dressing rooms. You know what I mean? Like, they're yeah. not all hanging out together, waiting to take photos together and hitting up the snack bar together. And no. You know what I mean? Like, they go on stage together, and that's it. They've been together for thirty years. Yeah, it's it, it's it's tough. You got to pick your spots. I remember when I um on Crank Gang because I work with Eminem. I went to Detroit to do phone calls in a studio, and I you was did it like with him there. With him there, yeah. Why side it, by side? That's pretty amazing. I figured that they would have just had you at no. some place in Jersey and then matched it up with his tape. No, nope, we all we went out there. Do you think that was his request? It was his request. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you know, Jimmy Kimmel at the time, Adam Carolla. Me, Daniel Kellison, who was the executive producer of the show, and a couple writers, and uh, and me went out there because he requested that he wanted to do phone calls with the characters that I did, Bobby Fletcher and Special Ed. Oh, he's a diehard fan too, huh? He's a diehard fan of you guys, the Crank Anchors. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember so Kimball saying that. Uh, oh yeah, you get a huge. photo with him in the yeah. studio. Well, that's what I I told the guys, the writers. I go, look, here's my camera. Yeah. Fucking, I want a picture with him. They go, look, we're not even going to go there about taking a picture with Eminem. I go, All right, well, at least you need to snap pictures while we're sitting together doing phone calls. That's the trick. Because it because we always you know. So I said, at least do that. So I got that. And I whenever I saw the camera up, I'd always mug for her. like. <laughs> and you see, I got pictures of Eminem not even looking, but I'm like, I got this big grin on my face. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I do. Like whenever I'm uh, I'm doing like interviews with wrestlers or whatever, I don't always want to stop them to get a picture afterwards. But I just say I try to bring like an extra person, or I give somebody a camera too, and go just take a photo while the interview's happening. Yeah. Or like Eric will come with me, and like after the interview, I'll be like, "Oh, thanks for doing that. Thanks for doing that." And I'll get Eric, or if my wife is going with me, I'll make my wife say it. Go, oh, can we get one for the website of you two? And I'll go, all right, yeah, sure, you know. Yep. You know, so you don't look like a douchebag. Absolutely. But I guess when you're like when you're hosting that metal show, they don't mind taking photos with you. I just do it right before the show. I yeah. try to get them before in the, in the green room. I go in, I go, hey, I'm Jim, one of the hosts. You know, it's going to be great. We're glad to have you. I go, can I get a quick picture real quick and just get it out of the way? Yeah. You, you know, know, but you don't have to say, we're going to put it on social media or something like that. No, no. I just go, can I get one? So I don't care. And they're cool about that where they they don't mind if I bother to guess before the show. But but then Eminem wound up taking a picture with me afterwards. Oh, he did? Yeah. I said, can we get a picture? Of course. So we, oh, so I, now you got the action shot and. Yeah. And I got us together making calls. That's good. Yeah. So I, but I, that was my backup. I go, all right, if he's not going to take one, at least if I'm sitting next to him. Yeah. That's good enough. Yeah, I went in there going that where I'm not going to be bummed out. I would, I didn't, bo I didn't bother Kimmel and Corolla. Go, dude, I got to get a picture. Like I knew, all right, I, I'm just going to hope this works out. But right, yeah, you'd like to think that if you're sitting there recording next to the dude, as long as you get that photo of you two recording together, good enough. Yeah, and it's yeah. honestly a picture of you recording something with Eminem is I, uh, probably better than yeah. standing photo op or whatever. Yeah. Jim was not happy when he came in here. He was depressed. I did feel bad for him. Like, he wasn't... That's yeah. why I didn't even ask him to stick around for the show. He's he just got, wanted to he's go. He's got still an outside shot. I heard that they're in town for a couple more days. There's a private screening tomorrow for their movie, Just Family and Friends, that agents and managers are trying to get him in. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're all four going to together take a picture. Right. But for family and friends. So, there's still an he's, out. He's, he'll just be sitting through that movie <laughs> just, just thinking about the photo. You should have seen him with Tony Danza in here. Poor Tony Danza. I was here. I, I didn't want to walk out at the same time. Yeah. Because Tony goes, oh, Metallica's here and Jim stormed out. Well, so, when, when Tony took a look at Anthony, then I went around him to see, all right, now this guy's leaving too. The whole interview... He was sitting there like he'd be looking at Tony, but then he'd just be looking out in the hall. Like he'd just be looking through the window the whole time. He was, it was, and Norton's usually very engaged in the interviews. Yes. You know what I mean? That's his thing. 
but he was totally out of it for this one. And then when uh, when it was time to go wait in the lobby for Metallica, Norton left, and then I left to go see what he was doing, and then you left to join him. So literally, like half the studio cleared out. I I, I was here to try to hope to get that picture. For Jim, any way I could stop one of those guys, that was my goal. Yeah. So I had to walk out. I didn't want to ruin it for him where Lars didn't know who he was and they were all walking out together. If I could stop one of them and get them together. But it didn't happen. It did not happen. I was hoping that the O and A weren't going to get mad at me for leaving the studio. Oh, too. dude, O and A are 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 so aware of how good this is going to be. Like they want as many eyes. Okay, all right, all on right. what's going on with Norton as possible. I hate reality shows, but how fucking that would have been the greatest reality oh, God, show yeah. of people filming Jim and all, all that going down or, the tension, and then also filming Metallica's crew. Like who are those can, fucking guys over there to keep looking? They're going to be a problem. Yeah. Like what's going on over there? Because it definitely was. They kept looking around yeah, the Sam, corner when you came up here. The door was wide open. And you see flash bulb going off inside the thing. inside the power compound. <laughs> it would be just be such a funny. You're right. It would be a great reality show because half of it would be Norton getting flown out to L.A. to do the Tonight Show and fans stopping and try to get a picture with him and all this stuff. And then you'd see the complete other half where he isn't even aware of any kind of fame and he's just another groveling like I'm just trying to get a picture. You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> like he's not. He, yeah. There's no ego. Because he just, the only thing that's important in that moment, I'm just trying to get a picture. Yeah, it's... It'd be uh, great. It'd be great. It would be. It's, I, I, you know... Do we have to, do we, is it time, Eric? You're past the time. All right, so play, play it until... Uh, well, you still got to read to do. Oh, shit. Hey! I got to run because I got to get back home. Yeah, man. Get out of here. I'm just going to read this and then we're going to play. I want to do your podcast, though. Let's hopefully do it. Within the next week or so. Yeah, definitely. Just text yeah. me whenever whenever you want to. Yeah. And we'll do it. It'll be fun. I just can't do it today because I do got to run. But yeah. I would definitely, I'm, I'm not blowing you off. Cool, man. No, no, no. I trust you. Get out of here. Uh, would you eat a fake apple made from fillers and preservatives? I don't think so. What about a meatball made that way? Well, like most people, you want to be able to pronounce every ingredient that goes into your food. If you cook at home, you use real fresh ingredients. If you don't have time to cook from scratch... Mama Mancini's meatballs is the answer for you. Mama Mancini starts with 100% USDA graded domestic beef for their meatballs and all natural ingredients like genuine pecorino romano cheese, onion, parsley, breadcrumbs, eggs, and a little salt and pepper. Real ingredients. That's it. Mama Mancini's famous slow-cooked Italian sauce is made just as simply as their meatballs. They start with whole Italian plum tomatoes. They crush them and then add natural seasonings. Mama Mancini's adds their meatballs to the simmering, slow-cooked sauce for the perfect combination of flavors. Since 1921, Mama Mancini's has never veered from Grandma Mancini's original recipe. Real ingredients just taste better. Mama Mancini's slow-cooked Italian sauce and meatballs, now available at your local supermarket. And I'm going to tell you this. If these are the meatballs of choice for Roland Campos, then they'll be good enough for you, too. Is that right, Roland? You betcha. How much time do we have? Is it worth playing a little bit of the song or no? Uh, we can do about four minutes of the five. Really? Yeah. All right, let's do that. And it's, uh, it's sad but true, correct? Yes. All right, this, as we leave you, poor Jim, uh, was not able to accomplish his mission of getting the Metallica group shot because Kirk came out first and then got in the elevator and went home. That's that. Uh, I'm sure more on this tomorrow when Jim will be back on the Opie and Anthony show. Ron and Fez are coming up next. Until then, enjoy Sad But True from the Sirius XM Metallica concert at the Apollo. Goodbye.